Hi, everyone, and welcome to NetGalley, BookTrib, and Merrill Moss Media present 15 Minutes With. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Austrian author Mark Ellsberg. Mark has written a number of books, including his most recent, Blackout, Zero, and Helix. He's hosted a TEDx, which we'll talk more about later, and his books are now being released in English here in the United States, particularly Blackout, out this summer, which is very exciting. Congratulations, Mark, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Hi. So let's first talk about um, Blackout. Can you tell us about the novel, the characters that we're meeting, and, and what's going on there? Well, the basic story of Blackout is that of a huge power outage all over Europe and then also about um, the United States. Um, though the story mainly plays on Europe, European ground, and there's a lot of characters, um, some main characters, um, a lot of um, 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 sidekicks. And um, I tell the story on the one hand of um, these main characters, um, how they go through the two weeks after complete blackout, how our society is developing in this time. Okay. And on the other side, there are um, certain characters in the, let's say, in the background or in the administration, um, which show what is happening, why, which describe the backgrounds. Um, right. Why is there suddenly all this disaster out there? What for you was the inspiration behind the story? Where did you kind of come up with the idea and, and what turned it into a full novel for you? Mm. Yeah, the original idea was um, not just to uh, tell the story of a black card, of a power outage. Um, the story is to tell how we change the organizational structures of our societies in the last decades. Um, all this um, network society, all this uh, mutual interdependencies in this world, in this modern world. And um, if one part of these infrastructures, be it um, energy, be it transport, be it communications, breaks down, everything follows, like on a domino day. And, um, well, that was the basic idea to, to show how everything depends on everything today. And, yeah, that story is easily told by um, constructing a blackout. Mm. Now, uh, your TEDx Berlin that you did, um, I'd love to hear a little bit about that experience and, and what that was like for you, but also the message. Um, I think it was a very similar topic. You were talking about blackout and... Um, can you yeah. talk a little bit more in depth about what you talk about there? And um, for the readers or viewers who don't know, you know, that is up online now. You can go watch that. In the TEDx talk I held in Berlin um, three years ago, I talk basically about this topic, about how everything connects with ev everything, um, how if the power fails, for example, most areas don't have no water any longer, mm. which many people don't know, or for example, in Europe, most gas stations depend on the grid, which means in this modern um, just-in-time society, um, no product, be it in, in industrial product, be it um, medication, be it food, um, can be transported any longer because um, the, the, the trucks get grounded without, um, without their... Um, and so um, communication, almost everything breaks down. Um, phones, internet, so you can't communicate with your friends, with your family. You have no longer any idea what's going on out there. And so that's basically um, what I talk about in the TED Talk, um, to get um, the audience a feeling how our civilization within hours, it's really within hours, um, basically breaks down and falls back into the Middle Ages. Right. And right. after two days falls back into the Stone Age. Wow. And... Uh is there something that um, you would think that we should look out for, especially in technology and electricity right now? It's, it's at such a high point. Is that something, this something we should be really be talking about more and, and, and exploring this idea of what do we do if this blackout situation were to occur? Well, um, we have become really dependent mm -hmm. on these systems 
really, 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 um, in Europe, in the United States, um, especially in urban areas. Imagine you live in a skyscraper, um, in the 20 stories high and the toilet isn't any longer working and the elevator not as well. So this gets a quite uncomfortable situation pretty fast. Um, and so all systems of our everyday life um, depend on the grid. And um, it, gets, it gets riskier uh, every day because um, these interconnections um, and these networks get um, denser every day, so they are much easier to hack. And um, you just need one entry point into this huge net to break down a whole net. So modern terrorism, for example, or modern warfare okay. um, wouldn't, wouldn't be um, done with bombing something, but by um, just entering these networks and bringing them down. Mm, very interesting. Something that I think we should be talking about and thinking about more. Uh, as yeah, I mean, absolutely. it's more. Um, we we always think of su suicidal bombers or uh, people running a mark with a machine gun, mm. and they can kill maybe a dozen or several dozen people, or maybe even like on 9/11, um, steer a, a plane into into a building. Um, which cost several thousand lives, but um, with a terror attack or a um, war attack um, um, like that, you could kill hundreds of thousands. Right, right. So the next thing um, I want to talk about are your other books, um, Zero and Helix. Now, there's and for those that are looking for your books, there right now isn't a plan to release those in the United States or translate them to English, but they are in German. Is that correct? Yeah, they're in German and several other languages. Can you tell us a little bit about those stories? Yeah, they're basically um, the same genre, if you will. So it's um, like technology um, thriller, tech thrillers, um, a bit also societal thrillers. So what I'm always um, dealing with is what does uh, a current development, often in technology, with society and what do we do with the technology? And Zero deals with um, all the surveillance technology, be it from um, in the NSA, but also from the private companies like Google, Facebook, and and others. Mm. And um, with Helix, it's about um, biotechnology and the the newest developments in these um, technologies, which are quite interesting with um, um, ideas like CRISPR-Cas and others. Absolutely. What about you? Uh, I wonder about you as a writer. I like to ask this question often. Um, wh what's your process like? Uh, you know, are are you an outliner? Are you a detailed notes keeper about your characters? How do you prep for that upcoming novel? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a, a planner, an outliner. Um, I plan quite particularly, um, let's say, the first quarter of a story. It's really scene by scene. Um, oh, okay. Um, qu quite quite old fashioned on a huge um, piece of paper with small post its and okay. for every scene I have a few words um, different um, colors for the characters and um, then I'm, I'm yeah then I'm developing the story and I'm also developing the, the characters in advance I'm, I, I write CVs um, and also about their parents and their grandparents to get to know them but I also um, made experience over the years that um, I can do um, as much as I want developing characters. While writing the story, they still develop their own head, their own mind, and um, suddenly do something I didn't plan. And then um, there's always the decision to make. Do I follow the character or do I force the character to follow my idea? And Usually, I'm my idea is um, the the character is right, so I follow the character, um, and that's why I plan not the whole story too um, precisely, because um, at one point they start um, their own life, and then all the planning in advance would be yeah just for nothing. So it's. Developing the first quarter, knowing some major points in the story, and with writing, um, 
parallel, um, I start developing, the, let's say, when I'm writing the first quarter, I'm developing the, the second quarter, planning um, um, more particularly, and then going on like the, until um, the story is finished. Wonderful. What about, um, I'm curious a little bit about your background. At what point did you know you wanted to be a writer? Is this something you've always wanted to do? Um, and do you have any previous background that has nothing to do with writing? Yeah, actually, yes. I've been working in, in advertising as a oh. copywriter, creative director in advertising for almost two decades. I started off, actually, I started off as an art director. So I'm oh, okay. I come more from the, um, in, from the, from this optical world, from the, from the picture world. Um, and only through advertising, I, I transferred to the, to the world of, of words and idea, which also, uh, which always was the, the thing I want to do, do in advertising. And so um, I also started writing, but only for advertising. And only years later, I never aspired to become a writer. I, the idea was more like becoming an, a painter or something. And years on in advertising, then I thought um, one, one day between jobs, I thought I'd like to read a certain book, a story I would think was, would be really funny and interesting, and and I didn't find it, and so I decided to to write it myself, and um, then yeah, this was my first book, but this was far beyond uh, before uh, Blackout, fifteen years before Blackout, almost. Interesting. Well, what about? Um, we do have a number of aspiring authors who, who watch these mm. interviews. What about, do you have a, a piece of advice for those starting out or they can't quite get to that first book, but they know they want to? What would you say to them? Well, I think that that's, that's, that's not an easy thing. I think that the, the most important thing is, is to find your own way how um, to write, how to develop a story, because there are the planners, and there are, on the other hand, those who just start writing, and, and the story develops while writing, and, and first thing, you have to find out which is your way, and then, um, um, I think it's never wrong to to read some of these books about writing, to see some tutorials of people who write, um, maybe even to to uh, see to see some classes mm -hmm. um, about creative writing. Me myself, I've never done this, but um, I've I've read these books because I think it's quite interesting to know the rules and the different mm -hmm. ideas how to develop a story, how to develop characters, um, how to develop turning points. And the more you know, the more you can decide for yourself which is your way, which which suits yourself best. Um, and if I, for my part, found out that I'm I'm the planner. I'm um, I'm the one who who um, wants to know the rules, even just to know how to break it. Mm. Uh, but this need not necessarily be everyone's way. Right. Absolutely. First, first thing, though, um, yeah, read a bit about writing. Mm. Absolutely. Um, what for you has the translation process been like for your book? Um, have, have you found it to be a smooth transition with, with the publisher or have there been moments of hiccups or things that you didn't quite anticipate? Um, it, while developing Blackout, well, this was, um, it's a um, quite complex story with a lot of characters, um, with a lot of places and the story is taking place. So of course there was a lot of um, yeah, playing around with where is watching the story, and um, but the story was quite finished when the publisher bought it, and he bought it because he thought it was almost finished. So okay. there was not much discussion, though there were there were some points. For example, this one of my definitely favorite scenes, and basically in the center of the books which is actually based on um, um, actual real happenings during um, Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. They inspired me, these um, stories about um, that event. Um, and my, my publisher said, I don't know if we need this scene because it opens up another kind of story. Um, this, Basically, it's about life and death, and do you help someone to die, which is a particularly difficult mm -hmm. um, subject. And she said, no, I don't want to touch it. And I said, um, well, that's one of the main themes of the books. 
um, what do you do in conflict situations and situations of conflict and um, then we had yeah somehow to to deal um, what do I do to, to keep this scene in the book yeah. she said that with, with a uh, different scene she thought this was uh, a really bad scene and then I also said yeah you're right the second scene is not it's, it's, it's not done properly, we have to change this. And then, yeah, for example, we made just a deal. I keep the center scene and um, change the other scene. Compromise, compromise. Com <laughs> this, this is, um, yeah, this sometimes happens, but I think it's necessary and helpful. Um, I, I really love to, um, to have these talks with my editor, with my mm. agent, who also is um, quite helpful in this process. Um, so you have some feedback while yeah. writing. I think that's quite important. So what about for you for the rest of 2017? Do you have any new upcoming projects? We know Blackout is out in June um, in the US uh, in, in the English version. Um, do you have other uh, projects coming up, um, even if they're not necessarily English versions? Yeah, there's um, some some um, versions of um, the book after Blackout Zero um, coming up in several languages, and hey. also my uh, youngest book Helix, which just was published in German um, last November. Um, there will also be several um, um, foreign editions coming up. So there's a lot of new projects. I'm also working now, which is quite interesting. Um, a project with my publishing house, random house, um, which is not a book, more in the electronic media, experimenting um, something, which I always like to um, look over the, the common borders of what you're doing right now. And, and also a new book, um, um, working on a new book. Good. Well, that's wonderful to hear. We are definitely excited about all of that. And I uh, can't wait to get my hands on Blackout. Um, it just sounds like such an interesting story. And definitely something that we can use here in the U.S. too, because, you know, this is so, this is something we should all be thinking about and talking about. So I can't wait to get my hands on the story. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us. It's been wonderful. Unfor me. Absolutely. Unfortunately, our time here is over, but I can't thank you enough for joining us and for chatting with us about everything. And I uh, just want everyone to remember Blackout is out in June. Um, so go pre-order your copy now. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Mark. Bye, everyone. Bye.